what was the creative process for you getting into your own comic book series? Yeah, so <laughs> I know it's always a it's interesting because obviously not a ton of um, editors go out and write stuff. Um, it was definitely more prevalent back in the day with Marvel and DC. You had a lot of editors who would kind of cross over and do some writing duties on some books. Um, and not so much at the independence with the exception of like a few where it's like people who have their imprints, you know, it's like, yeah, Mark Silvestri is going to be doing a book yeah, through his that, imprint. Yeah. Um, but for me, it kind of, it all started again back, back with Ross very early on. Um, this is such a comic book company story. We were sitting in the, uh, kind of like lobby, just talking about zombies <laughs> as you tend to do. <laughs> And uh, we were just kind of talking about a lot of the different zombie movies and zombie stories that we uh, really, really loved over the years. And I told him about this short script I had written for a contest um, like the previous year that was about the zombie virus passing through cigarettes. And he was like really stoked on it. It was like, that's really great. You should uh, you should pitch that. Because at the time, Boom was publishing a book called Zombie Tales, which was an anthology series that was all about zombies. And I was like, oh, okay, cool. And he's like, no, 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 you should really pitch it. I was like, no, yeah, like, yeah, maybe. And he's like, no, you should go over to Mark Wade's office right now and pitch that book. And I'm just like, what is this guy talking about? <laughs> like, I'm 22 years old. I've never pitched a thing in my life. And I'm just like, not even, it's not even a thing that I'm thinking about. And in true Ross fashion, he's like, Mark, come over here. And I have to sit there and pitch Mark Wade, like cold in the middle of the office. And, um... I pitched him this thing the best I could, kind of just <laughs> waddled my way through it. And Mark was like, oh, that's really fun. But I just greenlit a pitch just like it. And I was like, oh, okay. So he's like, but if you ever have something, like, come talk to me. Because, like, it would be fun just to do a short or something. And so he kind of opened that door. And I kind of didn't pay it too much mind. Um, and then one day I was like, oh, I kind of got a zombie thing that could be fun. So I went and talked to Mark. And he was like, yeah, let's do it. And so it was an eight-page story called Population Control, and that was um, my first thing that uh, got published. And then from there, um, it was interesting because I did a couple licensed comics that it, like at no point was I trying to like do them. It was always just sort of the opportunities coming to me. So um, one of the editors on the Disney books was like, "Hey." Um, you know, I know you're a big fan of the movie Wally. -E. You know, we're doing a second arc. Would you be interested in pitching for it? And I was like, oh, sure. Like, that sounds really fun. Um, pitched that, did four issues of that, which was fun, and did a Toy Story short that was a pack in um, with a Mattel product. And, um, and then, you know, I, Hit was the only thing I ever pitched. Uh, Ross like I, I wasn't just not that guy who's like here's like some new ideas you guys like anything it was kind of you know I really with with anything create around um I definitely pick my shots yeah. and you know develop things for a long time well I just don't have time like I'm not I I have a awesome job that I love I don't have time to also be a full-time uh writer that being said like it is a big part uh, of who I am like I love writing and I feel like it helps um, sort of like sharpen my creative process you know if I'm kind of writing over here and being creative I feel like it, it changes the way uh, I'm doing some problem solving and other things and it kind of feeds into each other but so I pitched them um, hit one day um, we got hit right here yeah there it is look at that is this the uh this is the first one. This is the first volume. Yeah, so this was a uh, this was really fun because I kind of stumbled upon some some true stories about the LAPD mm -hmm. and some shenanigans they used to get up to uh, back in the day, and I just kind of like I always loved noir. You know, James Elroy was an author that I discovered probably too young uh, <laughs> but I was always you know I was obsessed with Alcatraz when I was a kid and kind of always loved um, detective mystery stuff and so I came up with this story and Ross was like cool let's do it and I developed it over the course of years um, just kind of taking my time and fine-tuning it and working with people in editorial you know worked a lot with Ross and Matt Gagnon and then Eric Harburn who's the editor on the book and then by some luck, uh, my co-creator, Vanessa Del Rey, sort of just fell 
onto the book, which was incredible. Um, what was the process where she just fell onto it? So Daphne Plebin, who's a senior editor at Boom, um, she found her work online and was Tumblr, Instagram. I think it was Tumblr. Okay. Um, and she was just like, "This artist is incredible." And we're like, "Yes, this artist is incredible." And so she actually tested for a different book, a much higher profile book, um, and didn't get the gig. And then when we were we're doing a bunch of different artist tests for Hit, we we're like, "Well, we should have Vanessa test." And of course, like she, her test pages ended up being pages in the book. Wow. Um, actually, I think is it this spread. It might. I think it might actually be that spread. Yeah, I remember seeing that in in marketing images for for the book when when it was being uh, solicited. Yeah, and she she just did. Um, such an incredible test and I remember I mean you gotta remember I'm not a writer with any kind of profile or anything um and Vanessa was definitely like the most expensive option of artists we had and I kind of had to step back my guys like I'm obviously biased so I cannot make (laughs) I I can't uh kind of put my hat in on this decision obviously I think she would be the best but you know, I also understand um, whatever decision we have to make. And ultimately, everyone was like, no, like this has to be the artist on the book. And so Vanessa came on and we jammed on this thing for two arcs and had an awesome time. And, you know, she's incredible and now gone on to do even more incredible things. But uh, we still get to keep in touch and meet up at shows every once in a while and talk about how much fun we're having and she continues to be better and better but yeah she she's the star of the show i'm kind of just that guy off to the <laughs> side that's how, how i feel as a writer too because it's you know, the artist has to live with the pages a lot longer than we do as right. writers and creators so it's I, I mean vanessa did such an amazing job with the book it's really kind of like you can tell that noir style just fits with her art so yeah. well and she like knocked it out of the park well she's got like a little bit not a little bit she's got a lot of horror to her line um which just com- completely adds to the tone and the darkness and this is a very dark story and that um that approach that she she did with the inks really just accentuated that yeah